With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash 247 and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Michael Swain of Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Briggs Auto Group. I am Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And the man across the studio from me is Michael Swain of Fog.net. Michael, we've got football, we've got actual stuff to talk about, and we might just have two very good football teams in the state of Kansas. I'm fired up about football season, Fitz. I've been waiting for so long for this. As you know, we talked football all the time in the spring last year. It's finally here, and it's going to be a pretty exciting year. It's fun covering these teams. You can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show, on Twitter at the drive 13, and of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on our Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of the drive, you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at gopowercat.com and fog.net. And we start things off with our two minute drill, the first segment of the two minute drill, sponsored by Vanderbilt's your work boot center. All right, Fitz, Kansas State opened its season with an impressive 45 to nothing win over Southeast Missouri on Saturday in Manhattan. So, did this game go about as well as K-State coach Chris Kleiman could have ever hoped? Yeah, and, and actually that was my first question to him in the post-game press conference. I mean, they didn't have injuries. They rotated in players. I think they had played 77 guys in this game, including, I think, a dozen true freshmen since they have that new rule in which you can play four games and still redshirt. They played a lot of them in this game. But here's the thing is those players were good. They might be able to help this team. Michael, look, this was an FCS opponent, as was KU's. SEMO come in, came into the game ranked 11th in the FCS. They were in the playoffs last year. They said this might be their best team in school history. And while I'm not up on SEMO football history, I know that this team is very well regarded at the FCS level. And yet Kansas State just absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage for most of the game and really did whatever it needed to do. Will Howard operated, I know he hooked up with uh, RC Gar RJ Garcia, who's now in the regular rotation for the receivers. A lot of fun plays in this game. They opened it up and there was even a throwback pass. It, it, Will Howard caught a touchdown pass. Will Howard had a touchdown pass, a running touchdown, and a receiving touchdown in the first half. And I think that stat pretty much sums up the day, along with this stat. SEMO had six yards of rushing in the game, and they only got over the zero mark late in the game when the backups were all in. Six yards of rushing from what is supposed to be one of the best rushing games in the FCS level. This was a great performance by K-State. They got a lot of players in. They've got a much bigger test this coming week against Troy, but they did indeed accomplish everything they really wanted to accomplish. They got some answers on special teams. They saw these freshmen on the field, sometimes with the front liners working them in. It was a good day for the Wildcats. It was a little warm at the stadium. They had a stripe out. It was a great day. I was inside eating ice cream sandwiches. It was perfect for me. 
I think, Fitz, when I look at these games, right, week one, can you be crisp? Can you come off the ball and, and beat the team that you're playing? I think we saw some other Big 12 teams struggle with that this year, and I think it speaks volumes about where K-State's at right here in week one that this was the type of performance they put together against what you said is a, a, right, a ranked FCS team. Pretty yeah. impressive overall. Got to come out and take care of business. And KU struggled a little bit, but kicked it into gear because Kansas looked to be on the ropes for a short period against Missouri State on Friday. But a strong second half pushed KU to a 48-17 victory. Did KU check the right boxes before taking on Illinois next week? I think so. And I think this is the perfect week one game. I think KU would have taken what happened with K-State, right, a 45-0 win. But I think Lance Leipold and the coaches have just enough to harp on this week where there were good things in the game, where you look at the defense, right? I think that's the biggest question mark going into this year. And you saw the defense in the first couple drives of the game get hats to the football. That's something that has not happened. And you watch some of the best defenses in this conference, they get waves and waves of players to the football. You saw that early in the game. KU's defensive line also showcased a ton of athleticism, something that we haven't really seen for KU along the defensive front in a long, long time. But there was a lull in the game where the defense didn't get hats to the ball, where all of a sudden the defensive line had a drive or two where they were stymied a little bit. And I think that's the exact type of thing we're now throughout film this week. The coaches can go back and point and say, hey, look how good we were when we got hats to the football and the defensive line was coming off the ball fast. Look at what happened when a mediocre FCS team in Missouri State was able to keep us from doing those things. So I think that was big. I think offensively, it's about reinforcing what you know Kansas is, which they're gonna be an explosive running game. And then you look on the outside, regardless of who is that quarterback, right? Jason Bean or Jalen Daniels, we'll talk about that in a minute. But regardless of who is that quarterback, they need to be also a consistent passing team. And you saw that blended approach. It was almost even in terms of yardage, about 270 passing yards, about 240 rushing yards. That's exactly where this offense needs to be. And even then you see the impact turnovers can have, where that period in the game where Missouri State made sure Kansas had to sweat a little bit, well, it came after a Daniel Highshaw Jr. fumble, and it came after a turnover on downs where Mason Fairchild missed a block. So I think overall you're looking at this game and saying, KU showed enough where they dominated through stretches, but there's a lull in the game where the coaches can go back on tape this week and really harp on some things. I think that's a perfect spot to be in when you've got a physical and experienced Illinois team coming in this week. I feel like KU's got such an offensive identity with Jalen Daniels. And I don't think Jason Bean played bad. They just had to figure out how we're going to go about this in a different way. And once they settled into that, he was pretty efficient. Yeah, I agree. We got more takes on the quarterback in a little bit. Yeah. But well, let's go around the Big 12 a little bit. Maybe a new Big 12 team that impressed. It wasn't a great weekend for some of those Big 12 teams. Texas Tech lost to Wyoming. Baylor lost to Texas State. But I think most notably, TCU lost to Coach Prime and Colorado. So, Fitz, are the Buffaloes going to be a real big threat in the Big 12 next season? Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Look, I was really impressed. They've got playmakers. I mean, they've just got some dudes on that team. Mm -hmm. But it was a first game in a new system, and while they thrived, TCU had nothing to go off of in terms of scouting. Everyone moving forward now will look at what Colorado did on offense and defense and maybe figure them out. But I'm just going to say it. I'm going to be blunt here. Colorado wouldn't be coming back to the Big 12, possibly, unless they did indeed hire Deion Sanders. If they hadn't hired him and showed that they're going to make football important again in Boulder, I'm not sure they'd be in the conference. But once they did that, it was a signal to the Big 12 that, hey, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it right. And they roll into TCU, uh, a team that played for the national championship last year, and outplayed them the whole day. They, they did. They just looked like the better team. Uh, I was impressed with Colorado. They have some playmakers. Mm. And I, I don't know about you, but I was a little surprised that Deion Sanders' son, who's a quarterback, was that good. He's the real deal. Yeah, I think that the team overall is incredibly talented. I think people forget that Shooter Sanders was a four-star recruit, and the standout of the, of the game was Dylan Edwards, another four-star recruit who happens to be from Wichita. Yep. But I think for me, the standout is Travis Hunter. I mean, he's oh. a, a retro college football player, playing on both sides of the ball, making an incredible impact. You look at the interceptions he had, it, it looks like a cheat code. It literally looks like Deion Sanders in his prime, yep. except then he goes and plays offense and is an impact player there too. I think this Colorado team is going to be fun to watch this year. 
just because they've got incredible talent, I have no idea if they're going to win football games. But I know Travis Hunter is going to make plays. I know Shooter Sanders is going to make plays. That defense outside of Travis Hunter might get run over, and they might have issues when they play some better Pac-12 teams. But I'll tell you what, Fitz, they were impressive. I think you look at the recruiting footprint they've set. I think going into the Big 12 next year, I think they're going to be a threat because just with what Deion Sanders has done, he's recruited, he's added talent, and that team looks so much different than it did this time last year. Yeah, I'm really happy for Dylan Edwards. You know, he committed mm -hmm. to K-State and then committed to Notre Dame. And once Coach Prime went to Colorado, he followed him. They have a lifelong relationship. Four touchdowns in his first college football game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, a quick look at your poll questions results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. All right, Fitz, last week's question was, do you like the look of the six-team new Big 12? Absolutely yes, got 60% of the votes, not at all, got 3%, and conference realignment stinks, got 37% of the votes. I think A and C are, they can be the same answer. I agree. Like, you can like the new conference and yet it stinks. Here's this week's question. Which Big 12 team had the most disappointing week one loss? And here's the four schools that lost. A, Baylor, B, T, C, U, C, Texas Tech. Texas Tech, what happened? D, West Virginia. Make sure you vote on our Twitter page, at the Drive 13 and that will do it for this half of the two-minute drill. But we'll be right back with more on KU and K-State on The Drive. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab created or earth created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at JamesAllen.com code podcast. That's JamesAllen.com code podcast. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. Welcome back as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. This segment of the two-minute drill is sponsored by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. All right, Fitz, Will Howard started at quarterback for the Wildcats on Saturday, but the K-State coaches rotated in true freshman quarterback Avery Johnson in the second half. How is K-State's quarterback play, and is Johnson the real deal? Uh, the quarterback plays really good. I mean, uh, Will Howard looked really nice throughout the course of the game. As I mentioned, he was throwing the ball, he was running the ball, and even catching the ball. Um, they seemed like the offense was in a good place with the new running backs and no Deuce Vaughn. They didn't seem to miss a beat at all. And as we got into the second half, we started to see more and more freshmen, and eventually we got the question answered, who was the backup quarterback? And it turned out to be Avery Johnson. And Avery came in last year's backup, Jake Rubley. Um, you know, he backed up Adrian Martinez until he was hurt, and then Will Howard pulled a redshirt off. Jake didn't even see the field, which is a little interesting. I think he will play quite a bit this season. But they wanted to look at Avery, and they got a good look at him. And the kid is pretty special. He looked, it just, it didn't look like it was his first college game. He was so calm throughout his time on the field, ran for first downs, made some great passes, ran for a touchdown in which he cut back against the traffic and, and got his way into the end zone. K-State's quarterback room is absolutely loaded because there's guys I haven't even mentioned that could play for K-State. They're good enough to play. But the emergency of Will Howard and what he's become at a six foot five, 240 pound NFL style quarterback that stands in the pocket and throws it all over the place, but yet is athletic enough to move around, that's, that's a pretty good weapon. And then when you can bring in Avery Johnson who can run the ball, he's supposedly the third fastest guy on the team and he's a quarterback, which is remarkable in itself. I think you might see these two guys work on some things by themselves and you know, and also on the field together. I, I think Avery might be the Wildcat quarterback, but with this catch, he can throw the ball. And you know what they did on, on Saturday? They put on film that not only can Avery Johnson throw the ball, Will Howard can catch the ball. <laughs> I don't know that that was an accident or if that was a message to any team preparing for K-State. Just because Avery comes on the field and Will splits out wide, that doesn't mean he's not getting the ball. 
I, it's an interesting situation. They could have a lot of fun with it. I think interesting is the right way to frame it. But I, I've watched Avery Johnson in high school. There's a great game where his Mays team took on Derby, and he was incredible. He's an incredibly talented quarterback, and I'm excited to watch his growth at K-State, not only physically, but I think just overall as a human. Yeah, and plus he's got great hair. I mean, I'm jealous. I, I, I'm so jealous. Jalen Daniels didn't play in KU's season opener, and Jason Bean did get the start. What do you think of Bean's performance, and are you getting uh, a little nervous about Daniels' injury situation? Yeah, not so nervous about Jalen Daniels, but I, we really do have to start with Jason Bean because I think so much of this goes back to the bowl game last year where he overthrows the pass in, in over, uh, overtime, and he decides to come back, and I think here's the deal, Fitz. He could have gone anywhere. You look at schools like Iowa State, Oklahoma State, you're telling me they would love to have Jason Bean on their roster competing for the starting spot. And he decided to come back to KU. And I think that speaks volumes about who he is as a person. But I think also about the culture at KU where players who maybe aren't going to be guaranteed to play every snap still want to be around because the culture is that strong and the team is that strong. As for his performance, I think he continues to show improvement. You look at his first game against South Dakota two years ago, you look at some of the games he played last year, and this year I think he continues to be more refined. I think his decision making gets better and better. I think there are times where he still maybe shies away from contact in the run game, but he's more willing to run up the field, not so much side to side. But I think you look at him, KU's lucky to have him as a backup quarterback because a lot of teams love to have him. But for Jalen Daniels, this is a situation where I think if Illinois came to town last week, I think Jalen Daniels would have played. I watched him warm up pregame. He looked perfectly fine. He was throwing it accurately. He had good spin on the ball. I think this is one of these deals where he's got back tightness and fits. Look, I know you're young, but I've had back tightness before, and sometimes it flares up out of the blue. Sometimes you feel good. I think they want to make sure that it feels good going into the game this week. So you look at, in terms of the overall reporting of it, Lance Leipold has said that last week, Jalen did practice as a full participant. He did not get enough reps to be the starter last week. I have a feeling that'll change over the course of this week. On Sunday, Brett McMurphy of Stadium reported that Daniels is now expected to play this week. I'd say yes. We'll have to see how it progresses over the course of the week because, as I said, back injuries can flare up. But I think KU needs Jalen Daniels to be available against Illinois because from what we saw from Toledo, Illinois struggles with running quarterbacks, and that's exactly what Jalen Daniels is. I don't get alarmed at my back tightness. I get alarmed when it goes away. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do now? I feel good. I'm not used to feeling good, Michael, at all. But now we're going to step out of bounds. Out of Bounds is brought to you by Dare's Corner Market. We love local, and we are local for you. Yes, the Big 12 had some bad losses in week one, but... The four new members all won, and the four Pac-12 schools joining next season all won as well. Was this overall a good day for the future of the Big 12 fits? I think so. I mean, you consider that TCU lost to a future Big 12 program, so that's kind of a good wrapped in a bad. Someone had to lose. True. Um, Utah was a really nice win. It, it had been a while since they had a non-conference win over a Power 5 school. Florida came in. They didn't have their starting quarterback, Utah didn't, and they still rolled in that game. It was impressive. Arizona's on the uptick. Arizona State got a shaky win, but I think they're going to be great additions. BYU struggled a little bit, but got the win. Cincinnati got a nice win. And then, of course, UCF down there really did a nice job uh, with an impressive win over Kent State. And Houston beat UTSA in a, what was, I mean, UTSA was favored on Houston's home field, so that's a nice win. I love this conference, Michael. I can't get over how it's going to be so competitive. Mm -hmm. There's there's no alphas right now, either on the field. Uh, in basketball, there is. I guess who that is. Or and uh, but there's nobody that's just going to rule the roost like Oklahoma did for so many years. Mm -hmm. That's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength for this conference. There are so many good competitive teams, and it's going to change every year. I just have a feeling it's going to be entertaining from from beginning to end every season. I totally agree, Fitz. I think the parity within the conference is going to be awesome, where I think you're going to see a lot of ebbs and flows where teams have really good two, three-year stretches, and then they go down for two, three years. I think that's going to make for a really exciting product over the course of the long haul. I'm just interested to know, these, these non-blue blood schools like will be in the Big 12, how does the transfer portal help and hurt them mm. as it makes sustaining success um, even more difficult? I guess we're going to find out because the conference is expanding to 16. I think they should call it the Drive 16. 
I think that's a great idea, Fitz. Yeah. Well, now let's hear from the fans. Maybe they have an opinion on this. Our fan question is sponsored by Medlark. Retirement awaits in Manhattan where you can live your way every day. Our fan question this week is, what did you think of the post-game antics from Deion Sanders? He was kind of uh, feeling it, wasn't he? He was. I loved it. I'm here for it. Look, Fitz, I think coach speak has become way too prevalent. I'm right. here for coaches calling people out. And for those that missed it, Deion Sanders called out a local Colorado beat writer for quote, not believing in his team. I think that's totally fair for a reporter to do. But I also think that it's great for a coach to actually give some colorful quotes. Now, the big thing is when Colorado loses some games this year, because they're going to lose, does Deion Sanders handle that with grace? If he does, he's got my support. Keep giving us good quotes, keep giving us good sound bites, things to write about, but just make sure when the down times come, you handle it the same way. Yeah, he's not a cookie cutter, man. He's, he's his own guy. Mm -mm. He's very entertaining. I was just really impressed with his coaching staff and his team in that game. Yeah, well, make sure you ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. When we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. And it's time to head down the home stretch of this week's show. Now let's take a look at our predictions. Predictions are brought to you by Kites. Meet your friends at Kites since 1954. Remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page, at The Drive 13. Let's look at last week's results. We get a tie. We, I think we all had the same picks. That's why we have a tie. We all went two and one. Congratulations. We're above 500 as a group. Now, let's start with this week's picks. Michael, this line was higher than I thought it would be. K-State is a 16.5 point favorite over Troy. I'm going to pick K-State to cover that, but not feel good about it. Because you don't feel good about it, I'll take Troy. Yeah. Next up, we'll go to Kansas versus Illinois. Kansas is a 3.5 point favorite. I did not like what I saw from Illinois. I'll take Kansas. I, I'm going to pick Illinois just because I'm going to be that guy, but I'm, I'm willing to say I'm going to get this one wrong. Our last game of the week is Baylor against Utah. Again, a future Big 12 game. Baylor stunk it up. Utah didn't. So why is this line only six and a half? Will Utah win by more than a touchdown? Yes, free money. Yes, they will. Um, of course, it's gambling, and sometimes you don't get it right. Trust me, I know. But uh, we're both going to take Utah. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page at the drive 13 Michael somehow we ended up with time I don't know what we're going to do now it's time for our on the clock segment that we usually hurry through but now we don't on the clock is sponsored by carpet one by local for a strong local community Michael Swain of fog.net speak right now I'll tell you what Fitz I'm, I may run out of time here uh, there's a new era of Kansas basketball recruiting I think we're about to enter into and this past weekend is a good indication of that Kansas hosted three top 20 basically five star recruits four official visits at the same time. It's the most top 20 recruits on campus at the same time since 2016. Coincidentally, how long has that been? Since the NCAA investigation into the program began. We're now what feels like the home stretch of that investigation and as the cloud continues to raise from that, and I think current players also realize that you know NCAA tournament bans are probably a thing of the past, I think you're gonna see Kansas basketball take another step in the high school recruiting. They started with the five-star commitment in Florida, Bedunga. I think they're gonna continue this cycle and going forward. As Bill Self said, he's trying to take the program to a whole nother level. This is the exact start of it. I kinda of wanna pick up off that same thought. Just think about it, folks. The state of Kansas, what's going on right now? You've got KU football 
rising up and, and being very competitive, and I think they're going to finish in the upper half, if not the very upper part of the Big 12 this year. And Kansas State seems to really be establishing a foundation. You've got Jerome Tang that's lifted K-State basketball up to go with the magnificent performance of the Bill Self teams. You have both football and basketball in the state of Kansas for both schools absolutely rocking. It's a great time to cover it for us. It's a great time to be fans. And Michael, you know what else is a great time for? It's a great time for everyone to watch us every Sunday night right here on this show called The Drive. It says it right there. The Dr- uh, the Drive. My head's in the way. I can't read it. Anyhow, that's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. Get in on the action with the world's largest sports book. Right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is where the pros play. Enjoy the highest limits, lowest takeouts, competitive betting menus, and the best customer service. Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. Circa Sports Iowa. Sports betting the way it should be. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircaSports.com for details.